We are back in Kenner, Louisiana. Friday Night Fights on ESPN2. Presented by Miller Highlights. Kendra Lenhart, Trina Ortegon for the IFBA Super Middleweight Championship. Trina Ortegon, 7-1 as a professional. Let's take a closer look. 22-year-old Trina Ortegon is a former U.S. female national amateur champion. As a pro, she's 7-1 with two knockouts. We saw her here on Friday Night Fight in her last bout six months ago in Ohio, where she won a 10-round decision against Suzette Taylor. Ortegon realizes that women's boxing is in its infancy, and she has a clear vision of the future. If you have a better match, it's going to be a better fight, and people are going to want to come back and see more of that. It's action-packed. That's one thing that women do have is even if they're not as skilled and as talented, they give it their heart and their soul. There isn't a woman that doesn't go out there and just give it up, regardless of who they are. I mean, they can step in with people who are 14 and 0, you know, fresh off the street, and they go in, they'll give it all up, all the way, till the very end, until either the referee calls it quits, or maybe their corner calls it quits, but rarely do you ever see a woman just stop. Ortegon. 33 years of age, 5 foot 9, went in at 160 pounds. She's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. 7 and 1 with the two knockouts. Hasn't fought since that win against Suzette Taylor. Her opponent tonight hails from the North City, Tennessee. 34 year old Kendra Lenhart. She went in at 163 pounds. She is 5-5-1 five, five and one with five knockouts. She has never been at past six rounds, and now she has to go 10 for the vacant IFBA Super Middleweight title. She is a mother of three. Her husband, Marvin, is her trainer. Paul Seed of the referee for our second bout of the evening. Earlier, Marissa Shaw, controversial split decision against Sofia Kudasova. And there is Kendra Lenhart back to her corner. She fought on January the 13th of this year, first round stoppage of Lisa McQueen. She also fought Suzette Taylor. She was knocked out by Taylor. In fact, Lenhart has all five pro wins are knockout wins. And three of her five losses are knockout losses. And she's standing straight up. She's liable to get knocked out here. The border gun is able to time a right hand or a left hook as the taller Lenhart pulls straight back with the chin up in the air. You can see why she's been knocked out. She will pull straight back right there. That right hand just missed. Left hook landed. She's going to get nailed, Bob. It's going to be a matter of how solid order gun catches her. Lenhart played college basketball at Delta State University in Cleveland, Mississippi, and she also threw discus. Now she is a high school health and phys ed teacher and coaches basketball and track. Ortegon weighed 236 pounds in 1996. She just come out of a bad relationship. She took up boxing to get in shape both physically and mentally. And she says that boxing helped her gain control of her life. Well, again, you see Lenhart with that head up in the air, like a lantern in the storm, like the old-time trainers would say. And that's a good way to get yourself deposited on the canvas. Our reaction is to pull straight back. An Ortegon, who is aggressive, she steps in, she's going to nail him. Teddy, you can clearly see the skill level here as opposed to our first fight between Shaw and Kudasova. Drastically different. Yes, they haven't had big amateur backgrounds, these girls. They started later, haven't had a lot of amateur available to them. Lenhart was in a couple, believe it or not, tough man contests. That's how she got started because her husband was in some tough man contests. Final seconds of round one, Ortegon's power shots telling the tale. <laughs> Want to color your gray beard or mustache and get a natural look? It's easy with Just For Men Gel. You look so natural, no one can tell. With Just For Men Gel, no one can tell. With Just For Men Gel. It's not regular hair coloring. It's specially made to penetrate that coarse, hard-to-color gray. Simply brush in, and in five minutes, rinse. Now gray is gone, matched up to the rest of your hair. You look so natural, no one can tell. With Just For Men Gel. That's your seven slim gym. Hit your beefy
spicy breath out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> Acid. Aisle two. Hey, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Time to do a slim Eat me. One of the big no-nos, whether it's women boxing or men, do not pull straight back or you will get caught if your opponent follows you. She got caught that time, Miss Lenhart, by the right hand of Ortegaard. She got caught often in round number one. 31 of 90 times she got nailed in that first round. In the corner with Len Hart is her husband, who serves as her trainer, Marvin, who is an athlete too, Bob. Offensive guard for the San Antonio Gunslingers in the old USFL. There you get a look at Marvin. He was involved in tough man competitions, and that's how Kendra, as Teddy mentioned, got involved. She was in some tough woman competitions. Decided to start boxing. As you said, the skill level, big difference from the first fight we had here. These girls are a little more raw. Get it out, tough there, and Get it out. Although Otter got skills a little bit better, and technique is a little bit better, obviously, than Lenhart. But sometimes the bigger girls, just like the bigger men, have a little bit less technique because they depend on power more instead of developing other skills. With the smaller ones, you have to develop because you have more speed involved. You have to develop those technical skills. So we saw Marvin watching anxiously. Uh, call me male chauvinist. I don't know how you can sit there and watch your wife get pounded in the head. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's got to be tough. It's got to be a whole different dynamic. Right now, I don't think Autogon is taking advantage of the flaws in the defense of Lenhart. She's not using her jab enough. There, she tied the nice right hand. But she needs to step. Right now, step with her opponent and catch Lenhart stepping back. Lenhart will step back. Like that. Autogon continues to land bombs through two rounds. Rent it now when it's yours in 12 months. Save hundreds on TVs, VCRs, bedrooms, and more at Rent It Now. Rent anything and get 200 minutes of free long distance and seven free lottery tickets. Save with this new Coventry sofa and chair for only $22.95 per week, and it's yours in 12 months. Free long distance, free lottery tickets, and great prices. All at Rent It Now. Why rent when you can own it in only 12 months? Rent It Now, home of the 12-month rental contract that saves you hundreds. Chug a love, chug a love. Makes you wanna holler, hi ho. Feed you, tell me I'm the go. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Cold milk in a real cool chug. I'm a chug a lug and son of a gun. I said, let me have a big old sip. I've done a double back flip. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Makes you wanna holler, hi ho. Creamland milk chug. Feed you, tell me I'm the go. Milk where you want it. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Yeah. Three underway between Trina Ortegon and Kendra Lenhart. Ortegon in the purple has dominated this fight, landing numerous power shots. She's thrown 128 power shots through the first two rounds and landed 46 of them. If Lenhart can step in with some of her shots, she have a chance to catch Ortegon coming in. And to service her defense, too. Instead of pulling back where she's very vulnerable. See the punch numbers in round two. Ortegon outlanding her 30 to nine. And just about all power shots. Good left hand by Ortegon. Instead of pulling straight back, what Lenhart needs to do is step in because Ortegon can be a little wide too, coming in. Lenhart looks like she can throw a straight right hand when she wants it. She should step in with that. That would not only serve her offensively, like I said, defensively would really help Lenhart. Because when she pulls back, she's wide open. Under a minute to go in round three. The vacant IFBA super middleweight title is at stake here. And the left hand from Lenhart. Clean, no 
right here and now, Len Hart needs to step in with the punches, not pull back. Step inside one of those punches ball of the Ortegon. Start catching up a little bit. Nice left took that time on the inside by Len Hart. She needs to put the right hand with it. She needs combinations right now. Now number three coming to its conclusion. Lenhardt able to do some work on the inside, and then she eats another big shot. And she gets tagged again as the bell sounds to end round number three. But well, we saw her husband, Marvin, looking on earlier. And you wonder how you can kind of sit in the corner and watch your wife get pounded in the head. That's Ron Dininger in the ring, and there's Marvin outside the ring. There's Marvin to the right. We asked Kendra what it's like to be trained by your husband. When you do lose your cool, that you do have to go home with this person later. <laughs> that uh, We do actually live together. We can't just get mad at each other and he go home to his wife and I go home to my husband. Um, we have to go home together. So uh, the lines of communication are very important. Uh, we've always, I, I would, I guess, brag on that, say we've always communicated well and always been best friends and sports buddies. So if we keep that going, you know, there are times when you are mad at each other about it and, you know, you shouldn't have said that or you take it, you sometimes have to watch and not take it personally, but take it as a coach telling you and it's not so personal. And sometimes you kind of don't take it that way. You kind of want it to be personal because it's your husband. And then again, say, well, that's coach. It's not personal. And so you kind of have to throw it out the window. It's probably a little easier for Lenhart because she's been in organized sports being a college athlete in both track and basketball at Delta State. So she's used to that being coached because she's been coached for a long time. She was an athlete in high school as well. And she's a coach herself. So it probably makes it a little bit easier, even though it's coming from your husband. Well-spoken woman there. I wonder who does the dishes in that household, though. You think it's automatic that the woman just does the dishes? I'm not so sure. No, probably not. Come on, hold your hand. Tough guy, too. <laughs> he, literally, he was a tough man. And a college and a professional football player. So Oregon has the huge edge in this fight. Punches landed, punches thrown, all the power shots. And the other problem for Lenhart here, we're in round number uh, four. Remember, Lenhart has never been past six rounds. This thing is ten. Lenhart, the taller girl, is not using her height well. She does not punch at the right time. Matter of fact, her height is a disadvantage because being tall, she'll pull straight back and leave herself to be quite a target, which she's done several times tonight. She's fighting the short person's fight. She's fighting inside. You hold her. But in all way, she realizes because of her flaws, she's better off inside. At least she's not standing up and pulling back. When she's inside, she smothers Ortegon's punches. When she's outside, she gets caught. You're short now. Because she pulls straight back. Lenhart, that is. Yeah, good short right in the left hand by Lenhart scored. Yeah, better round for Lenhart. Very game, very game. Marvel at how many men have forgotten their calling. Used to be the prospect of a cold beer and some fishing would catch many a man on these shores, packed shoulder to shoulder. When the last man turns in his Miller High Life for a cappuccino, don't come crying if all you get is fish sticks. To Friday Night Fights here on ESPN2, presented by Miller High Life, Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas. We're in Kenner, Louisiana. Kendra Lenhart, Tina Ortegon, underway round number five. Usually, Bob, with the taller person, you want her on the outside. But in this case, Lenhart turned around a little bit by fighting on the inside. Because she takes away when she's on the inside. At least she's not vulnerable 
to those long punches from Ortegaard. He doesn't pull straight back. It's keeping him from pulling back by being inside. Had stake the vacant IFBA super middleweight title. As soon as Len Hart starts going straight back, she has problems. Like now. She dropped right back in close. Her instinct told her, get in close. Don't give distance to Ortegaard. Earlier tonight, Marissa Shaw, controversial split decision win against Sofia Kudasova. The main event tonight, Jolene Blackshear and Margaret Sidoroff in an IFBA flyweight championship bout. All women's boxing tonight here on Friday Night Fights. Just tuned in. You missed Brian and Max back in the studio with some very interesting videotape. Ah, get off my head. Released concerning the IBF scandalous tape. And you missed Zab Judah and Lou Judah. All the latest boxing news here on Friday Night Fights. In this fight, two game goals. Much sloppier than the ones we had, gotta be honest. Not as good technically as we had the two before this. But I will promise you, the next two, I've seen them. Technically very sound. These two are strong. Can't take anything away from how game they are. And their fight for the end of the fifth round will signify the midway point of the bout. To be the best takes strength, speed, endurance. The best way to cure athlete's foot has it all. Lamisil AT. Strength. Full prescription strength to stop the itching and burning. Speed. These take four weeks of treatment to kill the fungus. Only Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. Endurance. A study showed most users were still athlete's foot free three whole months later. Get it all in Lamisil AT. The best way to cure athlete's foot. Make sure you join us next week here on Friday Night Fights. We'll be in Atlantic City. Former champ Angel Manfredi will take center stage at our main event. Manfredi looking to get himself right back in the title picture. He'll take on Sean Fletcher from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Next Friday night here on Friday Night Fights on ESPN2. Presented by Miller High Life. 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Friday Night Fights on ESPN2. Manfredi and Fletcher. Should be a good one. And we are underway with round number six between Trina Ortegon and Kendra Lenhart in a power punch festival. Neither woman has been down. Ortegon has had the big edge in his fight as far as punches thrown and punches landed. Good left hand, though, by Lenhart. Lenhart could still turn this fight around if she would punch at the right time. Because Ortegon is right in front of her. See, one thing that I have to give credit to Lenhart is that tremendously skilled or technically real sound, but she was smart enough, or her corner was smart enough, to make an adjustment in this fight. She's not pulling straight back anymore. She's staying inside where she's smothering a lot of the punches that were landed earlier from Ortegon. Punch numbers three in five rounds. Huge edge for Ortegon in every category. You mentioned in the corner of Lenhardt, her husband, the trainer, Marvin. Of course, in Ortegon's corner, Irene Garcia, one of the early pioneers of women's boxing. And we'll get a chance to talk with Irene. Hopefully in the next round. And she fought in smokers in the 70s. Bar fights against men. That's one tough lady. And a nice lady. We had the privilege of meeting her once before at a, at a card where Ortegon fought on with on ESPN once before. Yeah, her last fight, August the 6th, when we were in Ohio. This fight has gotten a little bit sloppy. Both girls inside. One of the reasons is Lenhardt is bringing it inside so she doesn't get caught like she did early on the outside. And she has done a better job on the inside. This is the base of erectile dysfunction. So is this. And this. Fact is, one in three men have some form of ED, a medical condition also called impotence that affects men of every age, race, and background. What else do all these men have in common? 
They all faced up to their problem, and got help. If you're experiencing ED, there's no need to hide your face. Just talk to your doctor. It's the best way to get educated about ED and how to treat it. Sometime after NHL tonight, I take my knowledge to a sports bar. There's always someone there who... Underway in this 10-round bout, vacant IFBA super middleweight title at stake. Trina Ortegon and Kendra Lenhart. Kendra, Louisiana, located about 20 minutes outside of New Orleans. That's where we are tonight. Paul Sheeta says, quit the holding. Well, Teddy, we talked about Irene Garcia. She is the trainer for Trina Ortegon. And she joins us right now from the Ortegon go, corner. Kendra! Irene, Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas, uh, early in the fight, Trina had her way with Kendra, but it seems like Kendra's brought the fight inside and she smothered a lot of Trina's punches. Yeah. Yeah, um, this girl's strong. This girl's real strong. But uh, I, I think we're going to pull it out. You were doing real well earlier, I mean, when you had distance, as Bob just mentioned, when when she had Lenhart pulled straight back. You wanted to create distance, find a way to create distance by maybe stepping back and leading Lenhart into some uppercut? You know, we've been working on that, but um, Trina just, uh, she likes to fight. <laughs> she just likes to fight. Um, she's uh, more of a brawler, you know. Uh, she's got those long arms. We want her to box more, but this is what she likes. Well, best of luck, Irene. Right now we have Teddy and I at least have Trina comfortably ahead. Hopefully the judges right. are seeing that as well. We saw a shaky mm -hmm. decision earlier. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. And right now, Bob, you can see that Lenhardt is leaning on Ortegon. If Ortegon would take a little step back, create a little room, I think she'd walk right into an uppercut. Well, this is the first time that Lenhardt has been past the sixth round. Uncharted waters as far as her boxing career is concerned. Three more rounds to go. He's fine, is he? Join us for Friday Night Fights each and every week. Tonight we're in Kenner, Louisiana. Trina Ortegon and Kendra Lenhart getting ready for the start of round number eight. Now the boxer has been down, and Lenhart has absorbed a lot of punches and a lot of power shots. In fact, in the last round, Ortegon landed 14 power shots of the 16 connected. has lacked form uh, neither woman really skilled as far as boxing much more of a brawling type right here Lenhardt is back to moving a little bit and she moves and she starts pulling back to put herself in position to start getting nailed those, those punches she was getting nailed earlier with because she's avoided the last couple rounds by smothering Ortegon she does have an advantage Lenhardt that she's the bigger woman. Your hands are Last fight, she's 174 pounds. Six times, Bob, she's been 170 pounds or more. As heavy as 177 pounds two times. Ortegon, of course, the heaviest she's ever been is 162 pounds. She's only a middleweight. Right, stop, so what that stop. means is Lenhardt being behind in this fight needs to step in and use that power. Step in and try to catch Ortegon coming in. She's got some pop, she's got five knockouts. I wonder if she has a lot left in the tank. A, because she took so many punches early, and B, she's never been past this round. Not going past six rounds, that's as much mental as physical because she just doesn't know how much she has left. The person that's been past six, they know, so they're not afraid to let it go. A lot of times, the person that's never been past six, They'll hold back and find out in the locker room they could have done more. That's what experience helps no, you. Let it go and punch. Let it go. Or lack of experience hurts you. Some good body work there. Some uppercuts to the body by 
by the taller Reinhardt. She should do more of that. Well, mostly clutching and grabbing in a nondescript round eight. Did you know it can actually... Can't wait to bite into it. Not gonna stick the thing. I say to me, it's really nice texture. Grumptious. So I get set for the start of round number nine between Trina Ortegon and Kendra Lenhart. And as this fight has wore on, there has been less and less style to it. A lot of clutching and grabbing in the last couple of rounds. Let's see if. Lenhardt can open it up a little bit, try to make something happen. Katie, you and I both have her pretty far behind in the fight. So far through eight rounds, Ortegon has landed 125 more punches. Good hold and let it go. And Lenhardt. And she's thrown 152 more. Lenhardt is starting to use the uppercut a little bit this round. She's trying to catch Ortegon coming in. Being that she's short, she figures maybe she can nail it with that uppercut coming in. She's either going to catch her. Lenhardt's either going to nail Ortegon coming in or she's going to get caught on top of the uppercut because she drops it from a little far. And it can be counted. Teddy's scorecard, 3-8, 79-74, Ortegon. I agree, and there's the customary even round. I, I even threw one on my card, Teddy, same round. Well, this is not, obviously, nobody needs me to tell them this fight is not as good as the first fight we had. Well, that's, 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 that's one of the problems with an all-women's card. Because there are fewer women boxers and because the sport is still in its very early stages and there's not huge amateur experience as well, it's hard to make a full card of women boxing because the quality level, the depth of the field just isn't there yet. It may get there in the future, but it isn't there yet. So you get some of this. Time, time. Chug a lug, chug a lug. details in our truck, our fine production crew as we bring you Friday night fights each and every week from across the United States of America. Get up, get up, you and Trina Ortegon and Kendra Lenhardt underway in the final round. On, one thing that these girls, on, as we said, we get think up, honestly is they lack some of the skills and finesse, some of the better girls, but they don't lack the heart. You have to say that. Plenty of heart. Lenhart trying to land those big punches and she gets tagged with a left. Scores with a left of her own. Yeah, Lenhart is throwing a lot of arm punches. Being that she's the taller girl, she needs room to punch her. She pulls her arms back. Why? Well, she's in close like that, which is not real good for her. Although she's smothered a lot of punches by being in close. That was a good uppercut she just threw to the body. But when she's in close, she needs to pull her arms back to punch because they're so long. And that creates an opening for other guys to punch inside. Very, very rarely you see a spot with long arms real good on the inside. There's husband Marvin. Get off of her and throw the fight! Hoping his wife can maybe get that knockout. No, Kendra! No, Kendra! See those wide punches no, there from Lenhart? The Mordecai just positions itself to punch with her. You don't have any She will catch it right in between those wide punches. No, Kendra! Lenhart might be carrying the round. With her body punching. Oh, Kendra, throw it! And just her will. Just, just oh, making her stuff work. Stop throw it! Stop throw it. it! Come on, Kendra, dig! Oh. Dig! Dig! Lancing left dig, by Ortegon. Dig, Kendra! Dig! 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 Step back and dig! Step back and dig! Dig! And there's the bell. Good, hard, 10 rounds. You gotta tip your cap. 
Katrina Ortegon and Kendra Lenhart for the hard fought effort. Tonight, when we come back to Kenner, Louisiana, we'll find out who the new IFBA Super Middleweight Champion is. Is it Kendra Lenhart or Trina Ortegon? We'll find out after this. the greatest athletes of the decade live from the MGM Grand February 14th at 8 p.m. on ESPN. The punch numbers are staggering in favor of Trina Ortegon. She landed 128 more. She threw 170 more. As we saw in our first bout, that doesn't necessarily equate to a decision. Teddy scorecard 98-93 for Ortegon. I agree. Here is Thomas Traber with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards and we have a unanimous decision. Judge Penny Sanchez scores about 96 to 94. Judge Russell Nutkin scores about 97 to 93. And Judge Johnny Femia Jr. scores about 98 to 92. All in favor of your winner and now IFBA Super Middleweight Champion. Trina Ortegon. So Trina Ortegon with a unanimous decision win. And she improves to 8-1. And, and she is the new IFBA Super Middleweight Champion. Good effort by Kendra Lenhart. Still to come, our main event, Jolene Blackshear and Margaret Sidoroff. Now we send it back to Brian and Mad Max. And Max, I say that lovingly. I love your enthusiasm like Vernon Maxwell in the NBA. <laughs> I thought he was talking about the movies, uh, Mad Max. Yeah, it's beyond Thunderdome. Oh, Nothing wrong with that. We have